You know how choosing your class in D&D can say something about who you are? And how who you are helps determine what class you'll pick. Well, figuring out what colors you want to play in Magic is sort of like that, only with a lot more multiclassing. In the multiverse of Magic the Gathering, spells are broken up into five colors, each representing their own primal, psychological, and elemental traits. So today, we're going to walk you through what those colors are, how they play, and what they represent. But don't worry, you're never going to be locked into a color in Magic, and all of the colors work together. Even things that seem in opposition, like red, the color of passion, and blue, the color of reason, can be played together. In fact, just like in life, there's often strength in finding a way to mesh things that seem like opposites. Most of the decks you'll make will probably end up being two or more colors, so there's a lot of combinations that you can weave together to create what suits you. And don't worry about which ones are the best or the strongest. Because spoiler alert, there really isn't such a thing in magic. The best advice I have for figuring out what color fits your style is just to try them all in any combinations you think might be fun. But if you want to know more about the colors before you get started, you've definitely come to the right place. First though, we have to talk about one of the things that, from a design perspective, I think is the coolest about magic. And that's the way that they conceive of colors. The fact that this isn't a game about good versus evil. Instead, each color represents warring elements within the human psyche. Each color represents things about being human that are excellent, but can also be disastrous when taken to extremes. So with that, let's dive in. White. In Magic the Gathering, white is the color of law and order. It's the color of those dedicated to the protection of the meek and the humble. It's the color of justice and of strict moral codes. But it's easy to cross that line from law to authority, from order to authoritarianism. For all of the altruism that you'll find in this color, they have to be careful that their unbending nature and belief that they know what's right doesn't lead them to try to impose those beliefs on others. The ranks of creatures summoned through white magic are filled with clerics, knights, paladins, and angels, but also zealous crusaders, fanatical bounty hunters, and pitiless inquisitors. So how does white play? Well, it depends on which aspect of white you're building off of. White can play defensively with lots of healing and protection, it can take to the air with armies of angels to strike directly at your foe, or it can summon the common folk of the realm, the soldiers and the peasants, and field a vast army that gets into battle quickly and tries to overwhelm your opponent with numbers and speed. Blue. Blue is the color of reason and intellect, and blue mages are on a continuous journey to understand. They see the universe as a puzzle and have a drive to solve it bit by bit. But reason can all too easily turn into cold logic. In their quest to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos, it's easy for blue mages to lose sight of anything else, conducting horrible experiments or unleashing dangerous magics in their pursuit of knowledge. And because blue mages use their intellect to unravel their enemies' endeavors and put a stop to their plans, blue magic is a color filled with spells and counterspells. And they often summon wizards, illusions, and even jinn to their side to help them with that work. So how does blue play? Well, first and foremost, it's all about control. Blue decks often hinge on stopping the opponent from casting spells while they slowly build up power to enact plans of their own. Green. Green is the color of nature. It's the color of growth and the wisdom of the earth. But nature can be cruel and uncaring. The laws of the wild don't take heed of human notions like justice or fair play. The only law there is survival. Green mages trust in instinct and protect the land at all cost. Respect the land and work with them, and they can be the most steadfast of friends. But cross them, and they will show you all of nature's wrath. Green mages are prone to summon sylvan creatures, from wolves to bears to dinosaurs, and elves and druids often serve as their allies. So how does green play? Well, they walk a lonely road, the only one that they have ever known. Wait, no, that's... That's Green Day. How does Green play? I'm back. Okay. Do you like big critters? Do you like great worms the size of houses and having titanic dinosaurs at your beck and call? Well, then Green is your color. As the color most in tune with nature, Green also has a number of ways to increase the player's mana, letting them get those gigantic creatures out to the battlefield before their opponent is prepared. Red. It's the color of passion, pride, and freedom. It's also the color of fire, impulse, and rage. 
Red is a color of unbound emotions and of personal expression. Often at odds with society and structure, red mages haunt the crags and peaks, at home among barbarians, goblins, and anyone else who puts individual will over the constraints of order. Red mages can be ruthless and explosive, or passionate and sincere, sometimes shifting from one to the other in the blink of an eye. But all red mages thrive on chaos and love a good fight. And that makes them powerful, if sometimes unreliable, allies to have. Not to mention, they're fond of summoning ogres, minotaurs, drakes, and of course dragons to add to the mayhem of a duel. So how does red play? Well, it's often fast and aggressive, having hordes of goblins to bring into play from the very first turn. But red is also replete with spells that do direct damage, tossing lightning bolts and fireballs at opposing creatures or the enemy players themselves to maximize an advantage once they've got it. But never underestimate the titanic dragons that a red mage can summon in the late game. If you do, you might find yourself ending up as a toasty snack. And last but not least, black. Black is the color of pragmatism, where morality gets thrown out for efficiency. Only results matter. This leads to many magicians who dabble in the darker arts like necromancy, demon summoning, and vampirism. And while many see black mages as selfishly evil, some of the greatest good has been done when good works aligned with a black mage's self-interest. Creatures summoned by this color range from skeletons and ghouls to demons and, of course, vampires. So how does black play? Well, if you like bringing your creatures back from the dead, sucking the life out of an enemy with a single spell, or are willing to sacrifice your underlings for even greater power, black might just be for you. While not always the fastest color, black decks are often okay with battles of attrition, using everything from their graveyards to their own life totals as a resource. Oh, and did I mention the vampires? Huh? So there you have it all of the colors of magic. I hope those descriptions helped as you begin to experiment and find the combinations that fit you best. And of course, come back next week for our discussion of the stack and to talk about how instants work. If you're a new player or an old hand at magic, this'll be the episode that's most likely to really improve your game. Yes, Zoe, it's also the episode where you get to play again.